All right, everyone. So in this episode, we're going to talk about day trading and working full time. Now, there's no question about it. Having a full time job is a huge responsibility. Day trading, uh, I think for a lot of people that are still working full time is kind of a side hustle. It's something that maybe you're thinking eventually could overtake and you don't have to work full time anymore. But there's a period where you're trying to do both and at the same time manage other things in life, whether it's kids or whatever. So you have your hands full. So in uh, this episode, we're going to talk about uh, our various experiences trading and working full time. And so why don't we jump in? Well, Timmy, you're working full time and you're doing it in a, I mean, it's a, your own, you're self-employed. It's, yeah. Uh, you've got your um, own business. Yeah. So for me, I mean, I guess full time would be a little bit of a stretch for me. I probably, <laughs> I probably clock for my personal business, me and my partner, you know, he's a firefighter, so he okay. has one day on, two days off. We only work on his two days off. Okay. But for us, we've been able to, you know, do every bit of work we need to yeah. and still have a little bit of time off. So I'm probably clocking in maybe 20 hours a week a on that side. Hours. Okay. And then trading's probably another 20 <laughs> hours. Okay. okay. You know, which isn't, you know, it's like, it's just, it's awesome because I can kind of pick when to do the jobs and what time of the day is certain things. So I can get my trading in around okay. that. Okay. And so take note of this. So, we're talking about a job that allows flexibility. Yes, you yeah. can basically schedule your hours around Absolutely. trading. So you're not, you know, like a school teacher or something like that, yeah. where you've got to be at school. At, I don't yeah. know. And that was my biggest fear was like work. coming out of college and having something to where I was not able to watch the markets in the morning. Yeah. And that's why me and my partner started it. I mean, I started it when I was like 16 years old, not mm -hmm. professionally or doing it with a business license and all that, but just to get extra money. And I realized yeah. that it was something to where I didn't have to work a crazy amount of hours, you know, yep. and I could still make enough to especially get through college, stuff like that. And yeah. I could do my classes and whatnot. And it was something yep. that I honestly enjoyed doing. Just it's satisfying work. Well, for the so, YouTube audience, uh, tell us a little it's bit. It's pressure about washing and soft washing, which if yeah. some of y'all know, it's, you know, it's a lot of like really filthy stuff that ends up coming basically back to its brand new form you super know satisfying. a lot of people are yeah. super like oh it's not going to do that and they see it and they're like wow you know it's awesome so <laughs> yeah. it, it's definitely satisfying work and it's beautiful to do it while trading as well as i don't have to focus so much on my profits for trading i have that as a backup and i know you know yes there are up and downs with that but i know i'm still going to have income coming in so it definitely yeah. helps in that sense yeah. too so and then do, how do you find, do you find trading kind of rolls over into your day job? Like, do you ever have such a bad day trading? You're like, I don't even want to do my like day job today. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It also does help though, as well with um, like on days where I do lose money, I'm like, okay, I'm still making money somewhere. Okay. So, but then again, sometimes I'm like, now I'm not making any money today because I've already lost 400 in the morning and then I'm not right. even going to make that in the evening. So right um it, it's tough for sure but i just like that we get paid pretty much after every job so it's kind of like instant gratification yeah i'd say you know if we don't have any expenses for the business that we have to pay for then you know i can get paid pretty much the same day right and having that cash in my hand feels a whole lot better after having a bad day yeah and then i still yeah. have most of my day after that to still study and, and do what I need to do in yep. that sense as well. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So um, who, who's got to want to take another staff? I got a, I got yeah. another story. Um, right now, I'm fortunate enough that I'm not working full time anymore. Okay. But there was a time that I that I that I used to. Um, and my first tip of advice would be to move somewhere in which you can trade on the Pacific Standard Time, because for people like myself, the stock market opens at 630 a.m., yeah. which allows for me to trade uh, it used to allow me for me to trade from 6.30 to 8.30 and then go straight to a 9 to 5 after that. Um, so that was truly a blessing living in that time zone. Yep. Um, another way, another thing I used to do too is that I would only apply to jobs that are quote-unquote easy. By that I mean I, one of my jobs was I was, um, I was the guy that sat at the lobby of a hotel and you know, I was just mon monitoring cameras and stuff like that which meant that I was getting paid. And at the same time, I had my laptop and the courses up. I had live training archives up. I was yeah. studying all the time and I was able to, you know, invest my money in two ways at the same time, yeah. learning and getting better in my trading. And also at the same time, guaranteeing some sort of income. That's um, really smart. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I mean, that, that makes, 
that makes a lot of sense because there's listen there's a lot of jobs where you know they're paying you to be there but they uh, they don't give they don't care if you're reading a book or right if you've got something going on I mean, as long as you're doing your job when there's something going on but there's a lot of jobs it's just a lot of sitting and waiting right exactly so yeah i mean that that kind of makes sense to do that kind of job so you can keep focusing on learning you know about trading absolutely the only thing about those type of jobs is not going to be like high paying and when i got into the journey of trying to save for twenty five thousand dollars uh you know for my pdt account i had to leave that job i felt like all, all the learning was done so i didn't need a job that allowed me to learn and at the same time work but instead i wanted a job that would pay me more so that i could get easily and quicker to the twenty five thousand uh, dollar okay you know line so then after doing that job i started painting houses which okay is, which is kind of like similar yeah you can't doing. bring your laptop to work when you're painting houses it's <laughs> pure hard work and you know getting your hands dirty all day but you know they they pay good money right especially yeah. for his, for for somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience for somebody that is, that is young it's very hard to find those high high-end paying jobs in like a corporation or something like that so you have to get dirty and you know do the, those type of jobs i did that um for like a year i think i okay. was able to save you know almost a pdt with that but i gotta tell you you have to love the grind because for me it was you know going to bed early this the day started from the day before going ma making sure i was going to bed early because i needed to wake up at 4 30 or 5 to get ready for pre-market and then get ready to trade at 6 30. Yep. trade for two hours three hours then nine to five then I would go to the gym right after that. And then I was already starting my side hustle, you know, making videos and stuff. And I would make a, a recap or even if it's not a recap, you got to come back and study your own trade. So it was trade nine to five gym, an hour of studying my own trades and then to bed and repeat. And you're doing yeah. that like, like it's clockwork every day throughout the week. And yeah. then you have a little bit of a break during the weekends, but um, it definitely can be done. It's going to, you know, take a lot of you. You're not going to have a social life. You won't have a lot of friends, um, but, you know, are you willing to live like this so that, so that in the future you can live like, you know, like us, day trading? Um, I'm not working. I'm not doing I'm not in that roller coaster anymore. That's so, awesome. You know? Yeah. And I mean, that that's kind of the thing where sometimes I think that I'm like, you know, when you're when you're in that period of learning, you're really paying your dues. You're in the trenches. You're not getting a reward for your work every day. When you paint, you work eight hours, 10 hours, you get money that day well right. whatever that week you get the money you get the reward for the hard work with trading you're putting in a lot of hard work for months maybe years before yeah. you're seeing any real monetary reward and you know nick was talking about that yesterday he was talking about seeing if you can find another way of getting gratification out of the learning process that's not tied to monetary and to be honest you, you tell me what tell me what that is because i i'm not even sure we're, this is such a job where you don't see it. You don't see it anymore. Oh, I can't hear you very well. Sorry. Let me, let me uh, refresh. You don't. You don't see it anymore because you've kind of just like you've kind of absorbed all those all those traits now. Yeah. But if you compare your personality and like your your thinking process and your skill set as just like a human to like before when maybe you were working in a gas station, there's so many things that you have to become to be a successful trader and so many kind of like uh, archetypes that it kind of puts you into as like a successful person just mm -hmm. in general and being able to like see a goal work towards it deal with the frustration um deal deal with like setting smaller goals to achieve a bigger goal um all the mental aspects of keeping you engaged as a human um to where you you're you kind of just like really grow from it uh as compared to just like spending your time and money on on like a Netflix or sure, uh, or sure. like you're going out to the bars and drinking. Yeah, um, there there's there's a huge like like you're you're living your life like yeah. like you're you're taking yeah. a shot. Yeah, like like I think just that has has huge value. Um, like even if it is just at something like this, where it basically is like we're playing an esport like right. we're, we're in a we're, way yeah. yeah like like in in a major way like it's an esport there's zero zero sum game the value that we offer like in in the trade what that we're in is that we're providing liquidity maybe but we're providing the liquidity we're trying to trap somebody else whether it's a short or whatever on the other side so it's like we're playing a poker game or whatever um but the ability to become a person who can kind of like think faster than somebody else or think faster than the hardest game in the world which this is uh is 
is, is a reward in itself. And I think we all kind of have to be grateful. Like we have over 25 K or a decent amount of money to like, be able to participate in this game. Yeah. Um, and just that like is, is we, we've had to save that to learn how to be a person that can like discipline themselves. It, there, there's just so much value in that that you don't get from you know going home and watching Netflix. That's, yeah, that's my only point. Yeah, so I mean that's that's a good point uh, in terms of finding gratification or, or other areas where you can find gratification in the fact that you're participating in learning something that uh, you know it, if you get it, there's there's a lot of potential and you're learning something very complex and there's the reward of solving that puzzle i think probably with the hardest phase for trading i think the hardest phase is the period where you're downtrending where you're losing money being a break-even trader that's hard until you realize that you've actually you're actually doing something right. fairly successful by being break even you're already that's you're already on like step three or four of the of the staircase to success right that's hard mentally but it's no longer hard financially it right. allows you to have more time right the part where you're still stair stepping down where you're just red month after red month after red month that that's a place where it's really hard and i think that's a place where it's easier to get burnt out from the you, grind you, this is what you have to learn from like whatever you do yeah you're going to experience that patch yeah. Like, yeah. like, like pick, pick a profession, pick a job, pick a, pick a career, pick a, pick a martial art, pick a whatever, sure. like you're going to get to that point. And like, that's the difference between people who, who succeed or ha at least have the potential of succeeding and don't Yeah. like, like, can you, okay, deal with a little discomfort. Can you minimize your risk while you're trying to get it to work? And can you be okay spending this time, spending this part of your life and your life experience doing yeah. this? And if you can't accept all those things, you're, 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 you're going to be very sad and because you're going to keep missing your mark personally. And I think that's right. something that people have to look at. Like I went through a lot of that uh, personally where like I spent a year just break even and it, it, it hurts. Like I, I was sitting at a computer most of the time and, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and like just seeing bags under your eyes from not sleeping and having to go to work and like, yeah. um, and then like seeing yourself like, kind of age from the stress of it yeah. is something you really have to take into consideration and you have to be like, am I okay with this? Right. Um, it, it's like, it, it's a game, but at the same time, like this is your life and the time that you're going to spend on this is, is immense and, and, yeah. and take that into consideration. And you know what there, there's, I'm, I'm sure people out there who might be perfectly happy just doing the pressure washing or maybe just doing working in a lobby of a hotel or, or, or maybe just doing painting and, and listen, that's awesome. That's to I, hey, I, that's fine. But s some people, for whatever reason, are the type of people, and I'm one of them that I I can't sit still. I have just always things I'm wanting to do, and so for me, you know, when I would finish, when I had a regular job, I'd finish that job. I'd get home, and I'd have, I'd have other things I want to do. I, I just have so many things I want to do that. Um, it just became inevitable that one of those things I was doing as sort of like a hobby ended up becoming something I was more passionate about and more excited about than working for someone else. Because, you know, when you work for someone else, you're kind of helping someone else's dream come true. The dream of being the owner of a you know, painting company or, you know, the owner of some big restaurant or whatever it is. And I kind of want to participate more in making my dreams come true. So... I think everyone that's working full time and is day trading is doing it because they see, you know, a year, two years or three years from now, something, something more yeah. by maybe transitioning away from the job. So, so, so Larissa, you are, you're working full time. I do. Yep. So tell me about how is that juggling okay. learning to trade and working full time? To start, well, I to just a little bit about me personally. I've always sort of been in that phase where, you know, you go to school, you have homework to do at night. So you can't just like relax and play around. You have homework to do, you have to get it done. Then, you know, you graduate school, you go to college, you have more homework to do, you have to get it done. Uh when I started my first full-time career, it's the type of work that I don't report to an office, like a nine to five job. I had always worked from home even before COVID, um, along with a lot of travel. But because, and, and that gave me a lot of freedom, 
but at the same time, I was always bringing work home with me. So I never for my full life ever had a time where I can just like come home from work, kick my shoes off and relax. Like I was mm -hmm. always having like extra work to do. Uh, when when COVID-19 rolled around, it was the prime opportunity for me to start something new. And I was at the point of 12 years into my current career that I wanted to learn something new. So the first thing I want to say is um, sort of what Timmy had uh, rolled back on was that having a career, no matter what it is, if it's a nine to five job, if it's driving taxis, if it's whatever, just having that extra income is going to help you progress long term because you're not relying on your profits from day trading and to be honest you really unless you're a prodigy you can't rely on your profits day trading when you're first learning if you don't even know what a stock is and you're just starting out you need an additional source of income because you're going to go through all of these ebbs and flows that we've been talking about all day so that aside I have the type of job that's very mentally draining. Um, so it takes a toll on me um, in addition to the, the mental draining that you get from day trading. So it's like sort of what Marcelo said as well. Uh, I have a strict schedule that I adhere to every single day. I get up at 5 a.m., I work out, I get ready to trade. I trade for maybe you know two hours and then I'm straight to my job. And I work from home, but that doesn't mean I can just, you know, fool around all day. I have a job to do. I have to make money. I can't get fired. <laughs> so, you know, you do your job and then, you know, you make dinner, you study your trades and then you go to bed and you wake up and you do the same thing all over again. You mm -hmm. need that commitment. It's going to be really tough. And, you know, I have, I'm lucky enough that I can work from home and I was able to make it work from the start and I'm still able to make it work. And for that, I am very grateful for and I see keeping this job right now as a stepping stone for where I do want to be like a year down the road, three years, five years down the road, where I want to make day trading my primary source of income and then roll back on maybe uh, what I do now to just a passive kind of income for markets when we're not doing so hot. That's, that's awesome. What, yeah, that's where I see myself in a few years, but I don't see myself getting there unless I had this job. Um, you have to have some sort of grind. You have to put in some sort of, you know, discipline and effort and make these sacrifices if you want to make it work. And that's, of course, with anything. But if you really, truly want to make this work, you have to put in the effort. And even if that means, you know, working a nine to five and then studying at night, like maybe when your kids go to bed or maybe instead of watching Netflix, look at your charts or watch your classes and then, you know, when you get into the market is when you get into the market. Take mm -hmm. a day off of your nine to five. Take a personal day and, you know, trade the market and see how you do pre-market. If you feel like it's something you really want to do, well, then there's a decision you're going to have to make of changing your career, changing your job to something that will fit the schedule. So while you well, I think you do need that extra income, as especially as you're getting started, you're going to have to make choices to make sure that you're going to set yourself up for success mm -hmm. because we all know if you're going to an office from nine to five you can't trade in your office you have to do that work there yeah well manoli did actually <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so some, pe some people can story, yeah. right uh -huh. right um but you know for the most part uh, you, you know you can make it work yeah. you just have to be willing to make those choices and they're scary you yeah. know like yeah. Giving up a job that maybe you did for 10 years that you're so comfort, you know, comfortable with or used to or that, yeah. you know, that's scary to do. But if, you know, you're going to be scared of making a choice like that, then you're going to have a really hard time trading the markets to begin with, because a lot of the choices you make when you trade are scary. You have to sit through fear like that. Right. So if anything, I think it's just setting you up for success to have a job while you trade. But at the same time, you just need to know that there's going to be sacrifices you have to make and there's going to be a lot of extra work you have to put in. You can't just, you know, willy nilly your way through the classes and think that your first, you know, you get through your beginner's luck and you're golden because it just doesn't work out like that. And you'll see yeah. when you go through those slumps, like a break even year or even those slumps when you're just constantly losing money, uh, how much worse would it be if you didn't have any other income? See, like, that's like Ross, right. 
Yeah. You know, you're a perfect example. Yeah. You had to sell stuff from your barn to right. make it work. Yeah. And, you know? and, and that's the thing for me. I actually wish that I had had a job when I was getting started because the pressure of having no income, recognizing that I, I had a very limited runway of how long I could keep doing this without making money before right. I hit this apex right, exactly. of you're out of money. Mm -hmm. You need to get a regular job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I, I was looking at, um, I had a friend who was working at one of the ski areas up in Vermont as a, um, like a, a uh, what was it? Uh, like, I don't know, it was security, I guess. Um, but anyways, he, his shift was, I think, three to 11. And, you know, I was like, well, three to 11, you know, maybe I could join him. And, um, you know, it's when you work with friends, it can be not so bad. Time goes pretty quick. And that he, his job, you know, that's ski areas close at four. So for the most part, it's pretty quiet at that those hours. And I thought I could study a little bit and that could give me a little bit of cash flow. And so I, I had talked about how it was August and it was the beginning of the new month when I had that big blow up and I gave myself you know, funded the account again, and then in September and October, things turned around. But I was kind of thinking that winter that I might have to go get a regular job. And I was trying to think about a job that would work well with this schedule, you know, where I could still trade in the morning for sure and still study, uh, but that would give me a little bit of cash flow because the pressure of trying to learn how to trade and trying to just generate income for cost of living when you've got nothing else. Mm -hmm. Now that's a lot. Now sometimes people under pressure um, can perform really well. Pulling the rabbit out of the hat. Pull the rabbit out of the hat. And, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, I don't know. I, I do feel like hitting rock bottom for me in a way did force this, um, you know, I, because I had this apex point coming. But I also feel like my trading would have been a lot less emotional in the way I was learning mm -hmm. if I didn't from the very beginning have this pressure. And I also made this little bit of a mistake that, I don't know if it was a mistake, but I used um, the inheritance from my father when he passed away to fund my trading account. So, you know, it was a real, I had a real emotional attachment mm -hmm. to that money mm -hmm. and a real emotional atta uh, response to losing it, feeling of shame and guilt. And, you know, I, so all of that got tied up in my foundation of learning how to trade. And so in a way, you know, in this foundation of what is now a successful trading career, there's still these little, little kind of things that sometimes are just like, I feel like I still have that association of loss and that pain and it's hard to undo it. I still feel, you know, at times that I just have a real emotional response with trading. Uh, and I think it's because of sort of the way I laid the foundation of that's how it was when I started. And it's hard to unwrite those bad habits that you can fall into and it could be hard just from a you know like you know biology standpoint the way your brain is wired to respond to things once it gets kind of in that uh i don't know that wire that neural pathway it's it can be hard to break it yeah and you know i don't think there's really any wrong choices it's just there's all choices and if yeah. you're lucky enough to make the one that works out for you first the best then good for you and you know if you're blessed enough to have maybe you know born into big wealth or something like that where you don't have to have a job while you learn how to day trade then that's great too but if you're somebody like me who didn't come from money and had to work for every penny to earn that you earn I think just in my own personal opinion, having some source of income while you learn is the best way. And, you know, it's you, it's, you don't you don't know if it's going to work if you, you'll be good at it. I mean, treat it like playing basketball. You're not going to quit your job to go <laughs> right play right. basketball. Yeah. 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 But let, let's let's talk also about the, the the downside of having a job. Like what if mm -hmm. it does make you too comfortable? Like I I didn't really start turning around till I. I got frustrated and quit my job both times. Really? Like I, I get so comfortable in life just when something's working out that I don't grow. Mm. And so it, it was great having a job, seeing kind of the, even, even like I hated working for other people so much, especially because you, you know, you get imposed on so many things. You're like, oh, you got to do this and this process and this process. And there's so many redundancies. Yeah. Um, but I actually learned from that with my trading and started putting redundancies into my own trading and discipline in certain things and timing and time frames that I had to adhere to. And that helped a lot. Um, and it's like, why aren't you the one owning the business? 
And why aren't you the yeah. one, one there yet? And like, what in you is has to change for you to do that? I think that's a big question because you, those th same things will have to change to you to be successful in trading. For me, it was actually the other way around. When I was when I first became profitable and I still I still was going to the nine to five, I was actually you know I had my best biggest green months while having a nine to five because day trading wasn't my entire life and day trading wasn't my entire focus. So it was still a little bit of a side hustle. So I was able to push big size, don't really care about the outcome because I know that I'm still getting this income every month and really just go big and really just trade the setups without the emotions of trading the PL. Yeah. My biggest month at the beginning was while having the job. On April that I quit in my job, all the emotions that, you know, now I'm doing it full time. Now I better make money because I don't have these other sources of income to, you know, sustain myself and all that. You know, those emotions really got me and I went into my first drawdown on April in which I didn't make as much. I was I was I still closed the month green, but it was nothing, you know, nothing in comparison. So, you know, some, sometimes I feel like you by only having day trading as you as the only thing you do in life, it really puts the stakes super high. And the days that you don't perform, the days that you end up red really can struggle with you mentally. And sometimes I feel like I wish I had a job or something to do rather than just to focus on trading my entire day. But, but you because, didn't have to do it, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, you can just like choose when to pop in. And <laughs> exactly, because it gets your mind off of it. Right. And, and, it, and it stops, you know, and it helps you from becoming obsessed. Mm -hmm. It helps you from riding the waves of the greens, you know, super intensively. It helps you, you know, pull away and, and, and step back from the losses. It just softens the roller coaster a little bit. So, yeah. you know, sometimes having a job might be a good thing, even if you're mm -hmm. profitable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Timmy, uh, here's a question for you. How much money would you need to make trading to say, I don't want to own a pressure washing business anymore? Or that's would a, you say, no, I like this? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, it's something that I have thought about a lot, honestly, because there are days where like we go and something's wrong and, you know, it's just like there are definitely a lot of things that are nice about trading that i don't have to worry about in terms of my other business and certain clients that just are being super tough on us and whatever you sure. know that stuff insurance all this you know but it's for me especially with how me and my partner have it like we have fun on the job so yeah. like i don't really see myself not doing it unless like my body which you know i'm pretty tall so like it's definitely something that i have a decent amount of back pain coming from that yeah but at a certain point you know i know we'll be scaled up enough to where we can have employees and certain things and i know my partner wants to kind of run with it a little further so yeah if there's a point where i'm making i would just just to put a number on it if i was making like you know, over 200, probably 200,000 in that range, 100 to 200,000, I'd probably step back a little bit more. Um, but it, it kind of just depends. So um, I've got some certifications myself that there's like an army base next to where I live. And yep. you got to jump through all these hoops to get your business out there. So there oh. will be a certain point where I kind of have to be out there sure. until I get somebody that can go through all those classes and mm -hmm. the different stuff like that. So but I enjoy it. And that's kind of the main thing with trading. Like on the weekends, I'm bored unless I have pressure yeah. washing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm waiting for Monday because like that fires me up and gets me up every morning. Mm -hmm. and, and I never yeah. thought I'd have something that was like, I used to hate Mondays. Like, right. you know, it's like, why would I want to go to school? And like, even now that I'm, when I was in school, after I had like trading to look forward to in the morning yeah. like completely yeah. changed my perspective you know it was great for so sure. even with a job i think every single one of us look forward to monday morning yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, i mean i love monday mornings the weekends the weekends are long they really yeah. are so you know i i think that working full time and learning how to trade i think that's going to be the way that most people start and i think it's awesome i think it's the best way to start if you're in a situation where you don't work full time because you're retired or for whatever other reason, I think that's okay. But I think it's also nice if you could try to structure yourself. So this is the block of time you focus on trading. And then this is the block of the time that you do other stuff. Because when you sit here for eight, 10 hours staring at a computer screen, that can kind of be taxing. And, you know, I don't know if there's a diminishing return of how much you learn after a certain number of hours each day mm -hmm. staring in front of the computer, but 
I feel like there is somewhere, and maybe it's different for everyone. You got to find that for yourself. But um, I hope you found this episode interesting. This is the second episode that we've done on day trading and working full time. So if you want to check out the other one, we'll put a link at the end of this episode and we're going to um, film another episode right here. So make sure you stay tuned and I hope you're subscribed to the channel. Hey, I want to thank you for watching this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. This channel has crossed over 1 million subscribers and it's thanks to viewers like you. If you want to check out a couple other episodes that other traders are watching, you can see them listed right here. Thank you as always for tuning in and I hope you subscribe to the channel.